In this tutorial, I want to talk about the React lifecycle methods. So these are just simply a collection of methods that are available to you that React provides when you have a component. So if I take a look in my code here, I have a nav menu component, which is inside of my app component. Inside the nav menu, I've got my render method, which is creating a bunch of nav link components. So every component that I build I can, inside of this method, use the lifecycle methods. They're simply just hooks that allow me to carry out functionality at different steps along the process where React is building my application or re-rendering parts of my application. So we have a constructor and render. Render is something you're going to have in every one of your components. In fact, if render is all you have, then you can use a stateless functional component, which is just a function instead of the class. But we're going to look at the lifecycle methods, which means we do need a component because the component, that's what's bringing in these lifecycle methods for us. So a constructor, this is going to be the first thing that gets called. Inside of here, we have to call super, and this is required. We always have to call super because super is what gets us the functionality from component. Following constructor, we have some other methods, and then render, and then there's one more. So the ones that fit in between here, there's a component will mount and a component did mount. These are the two that you'll see the most often. So constructor runs first and then component will mount. So the component's about to be put onto the screen. Then the render method is called. It builds the component and then after that, and if there's child components inside of here, these will get built first. Then it comes back up the tree and says component did mount. So if I add my console log messages in here, just so we can see these coming out in the console. Nav menu will mount. And we'll come down here, console.log, nav menu did mount. All right, so those are running at the nav menu level. Inside of nav link, I also have the constructor and my render method, and those are both going to console log something for me. And I've added the label from the props into there so I can see a name beside it. All right, so I think I've saved everything here. Yep, yeah. okay, so it has re rendered. Here's my four nav links inside of the nav menu. If we take a look at this, Close the header, close main. There we are. Here's nav menu. Inside of nav menu, we've got the four nav links. So nav menu, it's going to, first of all, call constructor, then the will mount, then it's going to call its render. Then we go inside to the nav links, and we build all four of the nav links before we come back up to do the did mount. Inside nav link, constructor, render, constructor, render, constructor, render, constructor, render. And we can add the will mount and did mount inside here as well. If we were to add those, I'm just going to copy and paste these over and change the text. Save a little bit of time. So this is nav link, will mount, and did mount. If I save that, come back. Now we've got quite a bit. So the nav menu, we've got the first three there for nav menu. Then we jump into this first nav link. We get the constructor for home, and then it's will mount, and then it's render. Then we move on to the next one and repeat the three. Constructor, will mount, render. Constructor, will mount, render. After they're all built, then we get four nav link did mounts, and last of all, the nav menu did mount. So there's the tree structure working here. It drills down and does these in order. Now, those are the ones that run every time the component is built for the first time. There's also some methods. If you change something with your state and you update the page, or you update a component rather, that component needs to re-render. React looks at what you're changing, says, oh, okay, there's something in state that has been changed. I need to re-render this component because it's using that state. So we'll take a look at the code and see how that's happening. Inside of Navlink, I have my constructor. I'm passing in props here. This is how I was writing out the name. If we look at this one for nav menu, 
I didn't put props. We're being given props, and I can put it in here if I want. This will be the props object. If there was anything being passed, there was nothing being passed in my nav menu, but the nav link is receiving some stuff. So if you want to write out things that are inside of props, this is how you get to them, through this variable props that's being passed in. I'm setting up my initial state. I'm creating a label, which is what's coming through props. So this is just what's being displayed here. Home, products, services, and contact us. Those are my four values for the labels. Okay, I'm creating a state property called label, and I'm taking the value from props and I'm putting it inside there. And these are camel case, so these are gonna be things like home products. So I've got a capital letter, and then all lowercase, capital, all lowercase. That's what's coming in, that's what's being put into state. My will mount did and did mount, those will run. Oh, we can also, inside of here, we can add this.props.info.label because we can use this inside of any of these pre-built ones. Constructor, will mount, did mount, will update, did update, should update, render. Inside all of those pre-built ones, the lifecycle methods, we can use the keyword this without worrying about binding to it. So I've got that, or we can use the one that's in state. So we could say this.state.label. Both of those are gonna work. So here's my will mount home, and at the end, my did mount home product services and contact. So we have those labels showing up because we can use this without having to do anything to bind it. Now, I have added inside my anchor tags an on click method to call a method called though, or sorry, go inside of this component. Here is my go method, and by using the arrow functions, I've done lexical scoping, which means I can use this without having to do anything else. I'm getting the label from state, converting it to uppercase, and I'm putting that inside of the label. I'll console log that out, and then I'm updating state. So I'm changing the value of label to this new one right here. We can put an underscore here if that makes more sense. So I'm taking the uppercase version and putting it back into state this will change my state. By changing my state, I have new lifecycle methods that will be triggered. First of all is should component update. This gives you kind of a, a last chance to change your mind before it actually does the re-rendering. This method needs to return either a true or a false. I'm just console logging out the fact that I am changing it, but this is the first thing that runs after set state. Then component will update, very similar to will mount, just am I doing another version of it? Am I actually running the update? Yes, we are. So inside of here, I could access state again, I could access props, I can make changes to things. Uh, and then did update is going to be last. Again, it's going to run after render, just like component did mount. This one runs after the render. Component did update will run after the render as well. So save that and oops, label not defined right here. There we go. All right, so here's our big long list. The nav menu three, constructor will mount render, nav link, we go through the three for all of them, and then the did mount. Okay, now I'm gonna click on services, which is gonna change it to uppercase, call the should I change? Should component update, we return true. It will update, recalls render, and then component did update. All right, so that's that's the basic sequence. It just gives you a whole bunch of places to hook into the, the whole React script and say, okay, at this moment in time, this is when I want to change things. So a few things to note about these. Why do we have so many of these things? Why do we need so many? Inside of did update, or did mount. Inside here, this is where you do your Ajax calls, your fetch calls. You wanna get new data, it's in the did mount. You don't wanna do it before, you don't wanna mess things up, so this is the time to do that. 
inside of render, never call set state here. The reason we don't want to do it here is that set state is something that will trigger a render. So if you're triggering a render inside of your render, you can get into an infinite loop. We don't want to do that. So setting state should be done after did update. So you build your own custom functions. This is the best place to do set state, to change it, to update it. Inside of the constructor, we get access to the props. We create our initial state. So our initial state values get set in the constructor. The will mount means the process is started. Um, you can do the same sort of thing as you did up here. If you want to take things from props and put them into state, you can do that at this point. Although um, props and state can be set asynchronously, so it's better to go into the constructor, set your initial values, and you can get props being passed in directly. They're not being changed at this point because this is the very start of the process. Did mount, you do AJAX calls, and then you can have a custom function that runs after the fact and set state will be inside your custom functions. You don't want to do that inside your render method. All right, so those are the um, primary uh, lifecycle methods, the hooks that you can use to tie into what a React is doing and how it is re-rendering your page. So I click on Home, that triggered all the update methods. Click on Services, that triggered those ones. So I've re-rendered both of these click on products I've re-rendered that element so we have the new lifecycle methods here that will run as we update those all right so I hope that helps you out um, I will leave a copy of this navlink file as a code just linked to in the description for you to take a look at and play around with uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments if you found it useful please share it and as always thanks for watching